19,200,000 and our units are cups. So this is our answer for the bonus question number two. So question 16. So 16 is asking us about scientific notation. So there's a few parts to this, it's a little messy, but the first one tells us to convert 0 0.000395. It tells us to convert this, which is in standard form, and to convert it to scientific notation. Remember, the number that we've just been given is standard, either standard notation or standard form. Okay, converting this to scientific notation, well, we must have some number between 1 and 10, um, and usually is a decimal point. And then we times this by 10 to some exponent. This is just the notation for scientific notation. So in order to change this small number, 0 0.000395, into a number between 1 and 10, and it can't be 10, must be less than 10, so 9.999 recurring. In order to change this to that number, we would basically take 3.95. So we would effectively move this point and put it right there. 3.95 times 10 to some power, to some exponent. So to figure out what that exponent is, what we need to do is look at where the point ended up. And the point has ended up right here. And we need to think how many spaces does it need to go to get to where it was. So it goes one, two, three, four spaces. Now because it's four spaces to the left, and because this is a very small number, our exponent is a negative number, and it's negative four because we made four jumps. So this is our answer for the first part of the question. Remember, we always have a number between 1 and 9.9 .9 recurring. We always have the multiplication sign, and we always have 10 to some exponent. And this is a negative exponent because the point moved to the left, and because the number is a very small number. Okay, B. Now, B actually gives us the scientific notation which they give us 5.92 times 10 to the fifth power. So here we can see that this is going to be a big number because we have a positive exponent. But we are told, we are told to turn this into standard form. So we would still have our 5, 9, and our 2, but I'm not going to put the decimal point there because what's really happening is that we are moving the point from where it was five spaces to the right. So one, two, three, four, five. And this is where the point needs to go. So I can put my point there. And in the empty scoops, I need to put in zeros. And so that's our final answer. So really, we don't need that point. We could write our answers 592, 592 thousand and this is our final answer okay c c is asking us to convert a fraction and that fraction is 3 over 8 and it's asking us to convert this fraction 3 eighths into a percent so to do that, first of all, we need to change this fraction into a decimal. And so to do that, we just divide. So we could use long division, or if we had the calculator in one of the books for the exams, we could also use a calculator. But in this case, the 3 goes inside of this thing, inside the house, and the 8 goes outside. So 8 into 3 goes 0. I'm going to put a point. Then I'm going to put... A zero there. 8 into 30 goes 3 times. 3 times 8 is 24. 
we subtract it, we end up with a 6, and we drop the other 0, so we end up with 60. 8 into 60 goes um, 7 times. 7 eighths are 56. So we put a 7 there, and we write the 56. I'm running out of space. 60 minus 56 is 56. Four, and then we bring a zero down, bring the other zero down. So now we need to find out how many eights go into 40. So eight into 40 goes five, five eights are 40, so we have zero left over. So as a decimal, three eights is the equivalent of 0 0.375. Now if I turn this into a percent, what I do is I take that decimal and I multiply it by 100. So we would have to turn this from a decimal and then multiply it by 100. Effectively, we are moving this point two spaces over. So as a percent, this is going to equal 37.5%. And this is our final answer. Is number 17. Okay, 17 gives us this table. So let me draw out this table. This table has an X and it also has a Y. So I can even draw the separators. We have a bunch of numbers between them. Let me straighten that one out a little. All right, so the first number that we have is our X is two. We also have three, we also have four, we also have five. For our y's, we have five, and that's it. So what we're asked to do is we are asked to find and to write a linear equation. A linear equation, and it asks us to use two operations. It tells us to use multiplication, and it tells us to use subtraction. So we've got to be very careful when we use these things to make sure that we use them. So this is a function. It's almost like you're in and out machine. So your x's are the things that go in. So in this case, when a two goes in, your y, the thing that comes out, is five. Now we need to use multiplication and subtraction. So the rule couldn't be times two plus one. Because if we times by two and add one, that does get us the right answer here, but we're not using subtraction. So let's do times three, which gives us six. Two times three is six, and then subtract one, which gives us five. So this could be our rule. However, we are told to write a linear equation. And a linear equation must start and look something like y equals mx plus b. So in this case, we would have y equals, now something happens to the x. So here we're timesing the x by 3. So that would be 3x, and then subtract 1. This is the first part of this question. This is your linear equation. So now we have to apply this for each of the other things here. So in this first case, x is 3. So when x is 3, y equals 3 times 3, subtract 1, which equals 3 times 3 is 9, subtract 1 is 8. So in this case, y is 8. Over here, when x is 4, we have y equals 3 times 4, subtract 1. 3 times 4 is 12, subtract 1 is 11. The final one that we've got to complete is 5. So y equals 3 times 5, subtract 1. 3 times 5 is 15, subtract 1 is 14. So a couple of things. We've answered this question. We've shown work. This is excellent. We also make sure that we're showing the substituting of the work and our answers over here. And we might have noticed that there's a little bit of a pattern. So here we are actually going up by 3. And we don't need to do anything like this in the, in the test to explain it, but it's just interesting to see that we are increasing by 3 because the slope 
of this line, the slope of this equation, it's very similar to y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, where well, the slope's 3. And so, with every increase of x by 1, we are increasing the value of y by 3. And 